Motorsport, a gentleman sim racing club. You join us at Sand down there, down in Melbourne at the Dandenongs. My name is Nick. Joining me tonight will be Joe Baldwin, who's producing this broadcast, and we're going to bring you the Superstar Race Experience, which is, I guess, super sedans or sports sedans mixed in with a NASCAR on adrenaline. So here we are, down at Springvale, Victoria, 3.1 kilometres of Sandown International Raceway. Nice and simple to start off this season. Round one. Friday night, just completed qualifying, I think there's only two cars left on track, and then we're straight into it, as you can see here, a clear day, a bit of, bit of wind, 26 degrees C, and 3.1 kilometres, qualifying almost out of end here, race experience, uh, four speed manual transmission in a tube frame chassis power with a big V8 up front, big tyres, so but it doesn't break so well. Corner's okay, but it goes like steep down and straight. So uh, drag racing it shall be, especially here at Sandown Raceway. Hopefully uh, Paul's going to wrap up there. That's all right. There we go. So here we are. South south of Melbourne you can see there in the suburbs I don't think this track will last too much longer over the next couple of years but we'll see how we go Joe how are you going tonight yeah I'm good tonight thanks mate uh, yeah rookie in the chair so uh, I'm not too sure how it's gonna go mate I will do my best but we've got a uh, we've got a great run of cars tonight here the guys I'm not sure why we're not getting it up on, up on the thing there the grid probably because of time that's all right there's still one car. There we go. He's just jumped up to fifth. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it should be good fun. We've got currently... Oh, no, there's one more guy who's just gone on track now. Uh, we've got 16 competitors, a possible 18. Uh, once they are completed qualifying, we've got the grid there for you, and then we've got three action-packed sprint races coming to you. Uh, the reason why I chose three races is to, I guess, simulate a, a bit of like a, a stage race in the NASCARs, but also give the guys a reset, fresh tyres, fuel, full fuel, straight car, and get going again. So there's no reason to, to quit halfway through the night. You've still got another two races to go. Um, and it should be good fun. You can see here, there are all the details. I've even set the, the, the date to the exact so it would have been earlier today at 12 o'clock lunchtime. So, um, yes, oh, there's another thing I wanted to mention. Interactive TV, I like to call it. Pete Matt's in there straight onto it. Yes, you can comment on both our um, Facebook page as well as our YouTube pages there, guys. If you want to see somebody or give a shout out to one of your favorites, please let us know. On the grid here, in first position, we've got Greg Tippel at 1096. He's very good under break. So he should be got a, a lead in the back here. Nick Wood in second. Aiden Schultz in third, and third and fourth. Mark Horton in 5th, Adam Labus in 6th, Greg Heaney in 7th, Gary Cousins in 8th, Joshua Zulino in ninth, and Ryan Howe in 10th. <clears throat> That's alright, you, you do what you have to do. <laughs> Don't worry, I pushed the wrong button as well. <laughs> we got Brett Bradbury in 11th, Dal Sharp in 12th, uh, Eduardo Zamora in 13th, Julian Mookie in 14th, uh, and Colin Bennett, the last guy to set a time in 15th. Then we have Tom Williams, Chris Starr, Scott Craig, and Scott Jordanson. I believe those guys will be joining the grid either at the back or from pit lane. It's going to be pretty hectic. The brake zone in these cars is very long, but that does set up a lot of passing. So we're behind the pace truck. The only thing tougher in iRacing than these cars is the pace truck, so that's why I chose that as well. And away we go at the back there, at the end of the back straight, going into the Dandenong Road complex. Look for some good passing down here. And Biffo, 
Bring back the biff, they say. So, yes, side by side, door to door. Well, there's no doors in these things. Side to side, door to door action. Hopefully, there's not too much nose to tail stuff, but we got a rolling start. Uh, two more corners. That pace truck will go into the pit lane if it can fit. And then we're away. Now, in, in reference to what we used to do on a Friday night, we used to do NASCARs, but they couldn't break as good as these things but they weren't as light either so here we go final turn pace truck is angling into the pits Greg Favell is going to lead the field away as soon as that goes green we're on and we're looks like we're on now listen to the cars roar through here coming down to turn one Yep, they're around. <laughs> That's all right, we'll get to those replays later. There's uh, Greg in the lead. He's coming here through turn four onto the back straight. He's got quite a bit of a lead already. Um, we got Sam Stride in second there chasing him down. And it looks like Mark Horton, the Greg Favell's teammate in third. So down the back straight for the first time. I was actually uh, letting, letting it uh, play out just so I could even hear lockups all the cars is going past all the eights. Aiden Schultz here in uh, sixth place, breaking down here, at the end of the back straight for the fastish uh, turns, all the way down, and then he's going to have a look down here. Danny Long Road, he's up the inside, side by side through the apex. Who's he rubbing doors with there? Uh, Ryan Howe is right in behind him now. It was Greg Heaney, and as you can see, the brake zones are quite long, and these cars are quite robust. Oh, he's gone off track now. see these guys making their way down the front straight. There's a the first lap in the books. <laughs> Tavell with a 106 flat, apparently. I don't know if that counts as the fastest lap of the race, because that's faster than anything that's been done so far. But you... <laughs> As they make their run down behind the old pits, we're going to replay here. Here we are, turn one, lap one, Nick Wood. What happens here? Someone has a look on the inside of him, and whammo. Oh, wow. Oh wow, They everybody missed him. Fantastic. Good heads up driving guys, that was awesome. So unfortunately Nick Wood falls to the back of the field, but uh, with the way that these cars are hard to drive, and that's the whole challenge, he might make his way back to the front there. Um, it looks like Greg has fallen into second place on my live timing here. Sam Strider's taken the lead. There he is, Greg on his run down back towards the pits. Sam Strider in an upper car in front. That's all right, something different. And most of these guys, I would say all of these guys have never driven this car before tonight. So, <laughs> up and at them and uh, get in there with all the V8 power. I love listening to these cars. I'm gonna turn it up at my end. You can see here from the, uh, the drone view here, looking into turn one. You can see Greg really makes up a lot of ground under brakes there and he'll do it again down here to two and three. Very, very good on the brakes, as Joe pointed out to me a while back. We've got a replay here. Zamora takes a bit of curb and... Oh, oh, buddy! And again, heads up driving by the field. Well done, guys. And Zamora doing the right thing and escaping out. I reckon he could have stayed on for that one, but anyway. Did the right thing there. Obviously, joined the drone cam coming into the end of the back straight. Fantastic corner that one, same with that one, and then it sets up some good pass moves down here. And you can see, after two, two and a half kilometers of the 3.1k track, that Greg Fell's right back against the bumper of Sam Stride here. So Sam's going to have his mirrors full of this guy. But the lights are only painted on, so he can't flash his lights. Sam's got a bad run out of there. Greg's just got this nice run onto the front straight. Which side's he going to take? Up the inside. He needs a little bit more toe here just to get alongside. I think he'll get him under brakes though. There we go. Greg can just, he's just a king under brakes, isn't he, Joe? He can just break so much later. Oh, side by side. And Sam's had to give way. Fantastic. Um, and just sneaking into the background there, up three spots is Adam Lavis. 
uh, in the green Ferrari or Hillbilly F40, I would like to call it. As we come down into Dandenong Road, it's a big gravel trap there. There he goes, take a lot of apex curve. We're on board with him right now. And you can hear the V8 motor. It's only a four speed transmission, so there's not many gears to shift. There's plenty of torque in these motors. Cross the curve there. And here we go. We're going to start a lap here. Looks like Sam keeps getting on that outside curve and not getting the car straight. Gets a little tail happy. So we got Adam here in third gear, fourth gear. And we're going to break about 100 meters earlier than a supercar. <laughs> Back to second gear. Maybe even first through turn one. Little bit of exit curb there. And back to first gear through the chicane, two and three. Plenty of curbs. Barely get the full throttle. Back on hard on the brakes, across four. And then now a drag ship all the way up. Through the gears. Through the gears, all the way up. Side by on the side here of Sam Stride's car. Breaking at the 150 board for the first of the corners leading into Dandenong Road. This is all downhill through here. Plenty of runoff. Cross the curves. Keep the car as straight as you can while under brakes and then take the apex curve. They both missed it. It's one of these things. This car's still 1500 kilos, so you can still miss curves like that. And then the run back up to the final chicane. The, oh, the Nissan Z is off the road there. It's got needs a wheel alignment. I don't know who that was. Was that Mark? Possibly. We'll see. And then back onto the front straight to start a new lap. Greg Favell on lap. What lap are we on? Just gotta read my screen a bit better here. Uh, lap six. Lap six, Greg Favell with the lead of 3.5 seconds over who we have on shot here, Sam Stride, and another second and a touch to Adam Labus. So we've got a replay coming up here. What have we got? Greg Keeney doing a bit of a shortcut, Jason Wright style. Luckily it's not a, a quagmire there. Oh, the STP car, who was that? 342. Colin Bennett. And then Dale Sharp there. You can read the names off the tops of the windscreens. Dale Sharp there's come to a stop, so he must have launched him. Alright, back to Adam here going through the back end. And here we go, Ryan Howes. <laughs> He's had an aerodynamic adjustment on the front of his car. But that's alright, these things are built to be bashed. Got a lot of camber on the front too, but looks like the toes are all straight, so he's just going to keep going. Down into the uh, Dandenong Road complex. And then you can see the freeway in the background there. No cars on the freeway at this time of the day. And here we go. We've come to Josh Zuino. And who's he got in tow there? Gary Cousins right behind him as well. So two teammates. Josh in the black car. That's it. You can see on the track map there, everybody's kind of spread out now, but it's all about finding your feet, and with these cars being so tricky to drive, it's only a matter of time before somebody in front of you goes off the road. <laughs> so, up the back straight, Watching Josh Salino here from the uh, Flash Graphics uh, blimp. We go into that fearsome left-hander at the end of the back straight there. Josh has just missed the apex in, but plenty of room to recover. And we got a replay here. Here we got Chris Stark. Going through two and three. And it looks like he got a bit sideways. Oh, bash the wall. Ah, oh, he's tied. Here we go, Gary Cousins with the run down the front straight here. They're going to be braking pretty soon. And hit the brakes into turn one there. I, generally speaking, there's a bit of a river, a, a chocolatey kind of uh, dirt river that goes across the road there, and that's your brake zone. So through the two, two and three complex there, and we have Chris Stark joining us here in commentary. What's going on, Starkey? Hey, Chris. Okay. He's still got to get his mics sorted. Well, while we're on it, 
ladies and gents, it is an interactive TV as I always say. Please comment on our YouTube or Facebook pages and let us know if you want to see a particular driver and the like. We've got the two teammates going side by side down into the final chicane. Gary Cousins gets around Josh Shawino and we see the final turn here. Adam Labor's under pressure. Who's he got? Sam Stride right on his tail. As they go into turn one, Hillbilly F40 is really <laughs> long braking zones <laughs> and Adam's going wide here. Looks like Sam's going to get up the inside again. No, side by side into two. Really good thing is you can see these cars pitching. Oh, Adam's off. Oh, who's that? Who was that? Mark. They're a beast of a car. Three, two, two and three. Well, I was enjoying that and then uh, sort of went to take advantage of the cars that were slow once they corrected from their crash and Aiden went right as I was moving slight. Another two races, Chris, so plenty, plenty of time to get back in there and have a go. Um, yeah, only out of work tomorrow, so I'll just watch a thing. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> As we have Adam here un under fire. But the more Adam deals with uh, Mark Horton here, who's a lap down, the closer Josh Shawino and Gary Cousins get. There's another car, oh, it's that 300ZX, who's that? Oh, I didn't catch a number, but anyway. We'll find him on the next time by. You see Josh Sueno just going wide a bit in the background there. Gary Cousins getting a run. And watch Adam going up the back straight here. Here we go, replay time. Yeah, you, you carry a little bit too much speed and the front just pushes. So, I mean, you got to break so early. We're back here, live pictures with Adam Labus going down into the final chicane. Uh, lap 11, Greg Favell with a 12.3 second lead. Jones, Prince, the last talk about it. Sam Stride in second, and we got here Adam Labus in third. Uh, Gary Cousins in fourth, and Josh Salino rounding out the top five. We're almost at the end of the race. The Closing in on Adam as well. So through through the two three complex, and yeah, Josh ran wide at turn four. I called that one in the background there. Yeah, so there it is. There, just just missing braking zone, like we we're just mentioning before, and yeah, it just carries the car wide, 1500 kilos. Got to get the weight on the front of the car to get those front wheels to grip up. So, guys are making uh, light work of it. Top five. Back in the chopper cam watching Sam go through the final complex. So Sam's got 2.3 on on Adam and he's got 1.4 on Gaz. So that's probably the closest right now. Lucky these are short races. About bunch it back up and go again. Take it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sam's taking a bit of lap. It doesn't oh, matter what you put him in, he just gaps. A, si a simple a simple track like this, it just points out that the guys are just overdriving just a little bit, they just got to really get, get on the brakes, put a whole bunch of NASCAR drivers together, I'm sure they'll be a lot closer as well, but anyway, we're still learning. It's got Craig here coming into the 2-3 complex, a little too much curb, a little too much throttle, and he gets missed. Have we the review to how to crack at these cars? Daily.
Oh, that's cool. If you get a bit of a slide, you heat the tyres. It's oh my god, it's like it's on an ice skate. One of those cars, you have to drive it slower to drive it fast. So yeah, the closest battle here we got. Um, Joe, I just saw. Yeah, Gaz is right on the back of uh, Adam here it's for a third spot. We're into the final lap. Greg Favell with his 14 and a half second lead. Over Sam's tried it, and then we got these two for third position, both teammates. And all it takes is one mistake, and the other guy's through. And, and Josh Salino's not that far behind, too. So, pretty tight here in the uh, third, fourth, and fifth. Getting spiked, there's only two corners to go, though, so a big long break zone coming up. Going into the final complex. Greg Favell has obviously taken the, taken the win. Congratulations to him. Sam Stride coming across, in cell. he's already come across the team, there he is, and then we got Adam Labors in third, Gary Cousins in fourth, and Josh Sawino in fifth. Action packed, top to tail. Yes, the field did get spread out, but I mean, it's conservation as well. You've got to drive the cars within its limits, and the limiting factor here is weight and tyres. <laughs> Can only get better right greg is a class of the field in a v8 and these drive similar to a v8 um just time and practice and po positive practice i guess so here we go the first of the uh reverse grid races so i'll, I'll leave you with it i'll go watch the broadcast boys thank you chris enjoy your night on the pole reverse grid we got Eduardo Zamora, Aiden Schultz in second, Chris Stark was going to be in third, uh, Brett Bradbury in fourth, Greg Heaney in fifth, Scott Jordanson in sixth, Scott Craig in seventh, Mark Horton in eighth, Dale Sharp in ninth, and Colin Bennett rounds out your top ten there. Excuse me. <laughs> so now these guys are going to have to uh, keep their wits about them. Tom Williams in 11th, Nick Wood in 12th, Ryan Howe in 13th, Julian Mookie in 14th, Josh Sawino in 15th, Gary Carlson in 16th, Adam Maverick in 17th, Sam Stride in 18th, and rounding out the field, Greg Favell in 19th. So it's a full invert. So Greg's going to have to do the hard yakka now. There's going to be... You go. Just going to see how these guys go into turn one. If they make a mistake into turn one, it could part the part the field, uh, part the waters for him. Oh, there you go. Aiden Schultz is in is in one of your favourite drivers' uh, race cars. second fastest at the Open Indy test just uh, this week as well. Hendrick and McLaren, Aaron McLaren, here we go. Aiden Schultz leading the field away. Into turn one, he's brought the field right down in speed, so bunching them all up. And we're gonna get the green in about two seconds. Go. And he's got the jump. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful jump on the field. <laughs> Aiden Schultz breaking the turn one. Let's see if we can make it through turn one this time, boys. It looks like there's going to be some collisions in the back of the pack there, but we'll see how we go. And we got Brett Bradbury. He's the one in the 300 ZX. And we all made it through. Fantastic. Good work, guys. That was awesome stuff. Oh, Brett Bradbury across the grass there at turn three. And we're onto the back straight now. Let's see if we can all make it through safely. And it looks good so far. So we got Aiden Schultz from Greg Heaney, Dale Sharp, Brett Bradbury's falling back because he's got Ryan Howes just past him, now he's in a fifth place there, breaking for the top of the hill, 
Greg Heaney in the yellow and blue Bowens. I don't even know what that is. Car? Oh, there you go. Out of ten. There you go. Oh, have a. <laughs> he didn't get the rev match correct then, it locked the rears. So we got Dale Sharp on the attack on the inside and the hillbilly at 40. And we're riding on board with Ryan Howe. Which way do you go? Left, right, they're braking now. You can see it's a long brake zone. It's about 150 to 200 meters. And you've got to get the weight on the nose. And through they go, both um, Dale Sharp and Ryan Howe. So Greg Heaney's dropped to fourth. Oh, Dale Sharp's a little too quick into there. Now he's going to get a slow run onto the back straight. This could set him up for another pass here. Brian Howe lining him up. First gear. Se second gear. Third gear. <laughs> I'll listen to this thing roll. Fourth gear up the back straight. About 270 clicks an hour. These things are every bit as fast. It's not faster than a supercar. It's just they cannot corner as good as those. Even though the whoa, side by side. They've made it still side by side. <laughs> Oh boy, he's sorted out. Oh, he's drifted wide. Oh, he's got hit from behind. Dal Sharp's been attacked. And through goes Josh Suino. Alright. Oh, we've got some action in this race, Joe. We got Roy. He gone. <laughs> he has to go. Because he got. Uh, where is he? Greg Favell's already up to six. So he has to get going. He's only 7.3 seconds behind. So he's already made a pass into turn one. I can just see on the live timing here. So yes, Aiden Schultz has to go. He has to get going now. He's got another, what's that? Nine laps. Uh oh, Greg's around. Greg's around. So now unfortunately he has to let the whole field pass and just put in reverse and do a spin turn. Yeah, so uh, there he goes, puts it in reverse, drive it up to turn four, used to be the old turn one back in the day, and away we go, so unlucky for Greg, in 14th, Scott Jordanson now in 15th, and oh, who's this? Nick Wood, did he get assistance? It's very hard to do there, even though there's a tiny bit of a bend, but I guess the key here is to not cook the tyres, because they will knock them around and will get all sideways, here we go, here's the teammates. Mark Horton and Greg Favell, side by side down the front straight. And Mark there. Oh no, did I call that wrong? My apologies, Greg Favell's a little further up the road. Mark Horton there. Anyway, what the position is that? That is in eighth. There we go. Sorry, I have to keep looking to my other screen to see what, what the time is. <laughs> and we go down the back straight yet again. How much horsepower these things do? About 750 or something, don't they, Joe? Something ridiculous. And we got Brett Bradbury here breaking, breaking all the fast turn. 300 ZX looks bloody fantastic, actually, I have to say. <laughs> um, and he's just been passed again. Oh, there's a bit of a hold up there. There we go. And they're back on. Jeez, tell you what, maybe that, that little bit of a kink does provide them a bit of a, a traction issues, especially when the tyres are getting a bit hot. So, anyway, there's another one off in the background. My apologies, a straightened replay there. Alright, back to live pictures. You're good, you're good. We're still getting our feet, you're still getting your feet. We got Ryan Howe under attack here from Greg Favell up to third. Just to point out, Greg's still seven and a half seconds off the lead. So all things considered, oh, he's having another go. That's it, side by side into 2-3. You've got to make him work for it. Let's slow it up Greg a bit now. So Greg's lost another second there. So Greg's 8.3 off the lead. And Aiden has a 7.9 second lead over second, which is Ryan right there in front of him. So listen to these things roar. Eight grand up at the top here. Yeah, from a from a six litre V8. If they could all rev like that, would be bloody awesome. And here we go, through Dandenong Road, down the return chute. Greg Favell is just taking his time, just line him up. 
Once he gets past, he'll get some clean air and then he can do some fast lap times and we can see him cut into this lead. So, here we go. On to the front straight. Down the front straight. Completion of lap five. We're into lap six now. No, it didn't get a run. Ron Howe is doing a great job pedaling this car. Through the turn one apex, they're both getting to that apex, fantastic. Using the exit curb, down into the two free chicane. Plenty of curb on the, through the middle of that chicane, but no exit curb. Well, Greg got a bit there. I love this camera. Yeah, and we got uh, the three teammates back there. Trent Labor saying he hoped to make it back next week. This is, I purposefully asked you to come along, but I know you got some other commitments. And we got uh, Gazzy here. He's, there's a couple of fights happening right now, actually, as pointed out there by Joe. So Gaz is on the back of Colin Bennett, applying the blowtorch. Um, and just in case you missed it, Trent, these things are like the old NASCARs we used to race, but a little bit nicer. Oh, Colin's run wide in the STP car. Going to get a bit of a slowdown, and as you know, Joe, and as I know, the slowdowns have uh, taken a bit of a hit. You have to get it done earlier in the uh, as soon as you get it done, because it will not let you clear them until you done it properly. Brett Bradbury, I just saw it drop down the list. There you go, and the Nissan and the Z32. Yeah, and Pendulum the other way. Oh. <laughs> That's it, if you don't rev match it properly, down on the downshift it'll get you on the brakes. So here we are, Gary Cousins who finished fourth in the last race, he's now up to eighth. Aiden Schultz with an 8.2 second lead. And it sounds like we're going to another replay. This is Julian in the Marlboro F40. Oh boy, he definitely missed his brake zone there. I, I think, if you watch the pitch of the car, I, don't, I think he missed his brake zone, because you should be braking there at that brown dot. It has a pitch, there it is. He's missed it by a mile. He's missed it by a mile. Because these things really pitch. Yeah. These things really pitch quite well, and you can see here, watching uh, Gary Cousins, he'll get on the brakes, and he'll just pitch forward and close off the valence to the road there. It's the only way you can get downforce on these cars, so... Um, Gary Cousins here in 8th. Sounds like we've got another replay on the way. No? <coughs> Excuse me. And we got Ryan here. We've got, the, got Josh Sawina on his tail. And he's got Adam Lavis on his tail. With Dal Sharp on his tail. So we've got a, a four-way fight here for the top three. Just to remind us, everybody else out there, you're watching GSRC on Friday night. Friday Night Motorsport with the stock cars or, I guess you want to call it, Superstar Race Experience. Three races coming to you tonight. Thank you to all our sponsors. They will go a flash across the, the screen and we'll probably do that between the races. But you can see Ryan Howe here. Got the blowtorch being applied by Josh Sueno. And Trent, uh, no. No pit stops in this one. You've got your brother here sitting in fifth. It's just three sprint races just because these cars are so ridiculously hard to drive. Who knows, maybe if I bring us back for another season, we might put longer races in, but just to keep people coming, and wow, nice power slide there by Adam. Just to keep people coming in, and also just so it's a bit more fun on a Friday night, we just got three races, get a brand new car, new tyres, new fuel, reset, get going again. I was gonna say, if you wanna go um, on board looking forward from Adam, or backwards from, uh, from Oh, Greg's up to second. Backwards from Ryan here, as we can see here. It's fantastic. You can see the big F40 style rear wing on the back of these things. You can really... Exactly, 
five minutes there. You can hear on the exit of corners that they're braking really early. You can hear they gotta really be gentle on the throttle. Creep it on. Then it's straight, oh, up the inside. Josh Salino with a pass. Good work, into third place. He's the guy who was like, I can't drive these things in the practice, and now he's in third place in the race. He's doing really well. <laughs> oh, is that better? There we go. I can't press the button. Sorry, Trent. Oh, I'm <laughs> Hello, how you going, everybody? Thank you, Trent. Thank you. We're still rookies at this thing, so this is our first race as well. So, there you go. Appreciate that, Trent. Yeah, sorry, guys. I just realised I've been pressing uh, two buttons instead of one to load in my voice So, <laughs> hello, everybody. Yes, I have been in the back here. Yes, so, Trent, thank you. still got, uh, well, Ryan and Adam are, are all closed up right there on Josh. Josh has made the passes in the top three now. By the way, up 12 positions from the start. Greg Favell up 17 from the start as we take Chopper Cam, brought to you by Waste Options. Breaking in here for turn one, it's a really long break zone. And you can see they're breaking for <laughs> about three times longer than the sand trap at the end of it, so you want to hope that you got a little bit of break. Um, through the two, two, three complex over the flood, flood zone there, and through four past the lake that you cannot see. <laughs> Looks like it's water storage for the for the racetrack. Then up the drag strip that is the back straight. Make your way up to. Ooh, Josh is losing some space here. Brian Howe's got a good run. He's going to have a look down at Dandenong Road, I think. Oh, he's just gone in a little too hot. And that's the thing, this car penalises your mistakes. So you've got to be really, really accurate in the car that's really not accurate. <laughs> and just be on it the whole time. It's all of... It's not so much the turning of the car with the steering wheel, it's turning the car with the pedals. Yeah, Calm the car down. Yeah, oh, sorry, go on, Joe. You've got a brake and a throttle there to use. And you've got to use it to help try and get these big lumber cars to rotate. see here go through the final complex the stp car of colin bennett he's right on the back of greg heaney in the whiskey business racing 273 there so that yellow and blue one and they're chasing julian mookie in the sharp eit with the chevrons on it he's still yet to get a paint job no doubt excuse me so we got colin going here through here through turn one and then um just to go over the current ta table here, we've got Aiden Schultz in first, 4.6 seconds over Greg Favell with another 5.9 to Josh. Who we have here on screen with Ryan Howe, half a second right behind him. And then Adam Labus, 1.8 back to round out the top five. So it's all settled down, but this seems to be the closest fight. And Josh keeps cranking that car sideways. It's going to start wearing those tyres out. If Ryan keeps the car nice and straight and alpha aggressive, Wrestle racing, um, he might get the better of him. There's not, there's got to be a handful of laps to go. What are we, 14 minutes lap 13 in? Yeah, it is good to see Julian back in the rig. Yeah, so we got to have uh, five minutes to go in this one. Uh, and I'll tell you what, this uh, Ryan Howe is quite a bloke. Josh is pretty happy to run up in third there. Well, the last couple of seasons he hasn't done a lot of racing, he's been a long time the long time. Oh, Josh cranking sideways again. Yes, Joe, that's usually your livery. <laughs> yeah, it certainly is. Oh, Brett. It looks like he might have called that one tonight. Now we're on board. Brought to you by Sprayton here, and we're right, riding with Ryan Howe. Yeah, it looks like Brett Bradbury has run out of patience with my lack of ability, but I mean, it's one of those things you just got to keep doing laps, in my opinion. 
There's still another race, Brett, so get back in there. Do the 2-3 two, two, complex here. Oh, Josh is sideways. And now he's got Ryan right on his tail. Across the apex there, down the back straight. There's only two tenths of a second between these two. Ryan getting a bit of wheel spin coming out of there in first gear. Oh, that kink in the back straight. Just cranked the car sideways, so he's lost his run now. Well, he's still getting up there side by side. It looks like Josh will have the inside here run into the left-hander. They are side by side across the kerbs. And it's down smart, into... Smart boy, uh, Ryan there. Oh, he's got it. Oh. oh, that's going to hurt Ryan's tyres for the next probably half a quarter of lap. But you get up on the outside there and you, you get the driver that you're racing shallow and corner and they've got to exactly. arrest their speed and they'll get back off at the right moment. Dandy surprise is what I like to call it. Because you surprise that driver down there for Dandy Wrong Road. Yeah. You're going to turn yeah. one again. Shoot back and have a look at uh, what this one's in there and what happened. Brett in the Z, he's turned into uh, touch oh, early and touch fast. He's done it again. That's what's happened before. That'd be very, very frustrating. Actually, no, that's, that might be, we might have seen that one. Yeah, we've seen that one already, yeah. That's all right. We're still learning. There is another fight uh, appearing too uh, there, Joe. Sam Strider and Gary Cousins for eighth position. They're getting pretty close as well. So we've got, got to have <laughs> eyes on the back of our head and on the front of our head. Yeah, let's get in there, Brett. I mean, that's the whole idea about this thing is have a bit of fun. And even if you do muck up, you get on TV. You get on broadcast. So what the hell? We've got the Napa Auto Parts car of Sam Stride right He's applying the blowtorch to Gary Cousins in the Bailey Ladders car. We've only got a handful of laps now. 16 in, 17, 18 minutes in. It's probably going to be a white flag in the next lap or two. So there's only going to be two laps here. Tires are wearing out, patience are wearing out, frustrations are sinking in. Sam Stride here with a great run. On the Bailey Ladders Orbit car there. And the Napa Auto Parts break of turn one. Break of turn one. Yeah, done well. Oh, oh. Car in behind there though. Uh, Julian, he, uh, he certainly attacked. That's it. And that's the thing. You're side by side, so you've got to break it about five meters early, maybe ten in these cars, and give it to your lap of that space. And it looks like the lead is closing up too. We got Greg Favell within a second of Aiden Schultz. Aiden has wa is wanting these laps to run out ASAP. He's hoping to get the white flag. Now we're on board. Sprayton. Oh, Sprayton on board there with Greg Favell. He's run a bit deep. That's actually given him, a, a, a Aiden, a bit of a, of a gap here because Greg ran a bit deep there. There's the white flag. You see Barney throwing his arm out the, at the, uh, the flagging post there. So there's only a real three break zones left to go. Three big break zones. So what's Aiden, Greg going to do? Aiden is swift. on your tail and then you'll be lucky with cars but I mean look Aiden has a proof of wrong all race and Greg's had to fight through the pack so but uh, Aiden's going to be just if he doesn't make a mistake he'll pitch a break down uh, Joe I've got a big smile on my face not only are these cars providing me entertainment that I thought they would there's fights appearing all over the show Ryan Howes on the back of Josh Suino and Julian Mookie's right on the back of uh, Greg Heaney as well. So, Aiden Schultz here, he's got to be looking forward. He can't look back right now. He's got one more break zone to get right. And then, <laughs> as we look back, <laughs> here he is, through the left, through the left hander, onto the front straight, get a nice clean run, no wheel spin. All right, well done. Aiden Schultz. Win the race, Sue, well done, Greg. Well, he's very happy there. He's, um, He's come on through and Josh has managed to finish third power for Adam Mavericks coming in from fifth. Nick Wood, Dale Sharp, Sam Strider behind. There he is. And Julian Murky there in the background there. I think 
Julian will bring up a, oh, sorry, a Greg tent there. That was a bit more interesting, Joe. It certainly was. The, uh, the reverse grip racers always seem to turn it on. It's, um, oh, is he out of fuel? Oh, no, no, he's just had enough. So, and Colin Bennett there doing a really good avoidance job. And Marky, good on him for pushing on with a broken car. And I believe and the final uh, man the Tom. Tom Williams. Once again, if you guys are watching on Facebook or YouTube, please let us know your favourite driver. We'll try and get them on the screen. Um, interactive TV at its best. Well done to those guys. Uh, look, Aiden Schultz is coming out with a with a W there. And having Greg Favell work his way up, I didn't catch how many spots it was, but it was probably 17 or 18 spots that he made up from the start of the race. So, fantastic all stuff by, there. All by one spot. He it's right the one that matters. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, but I tell you, look, it's, uh, it's going to make for a great race in, in this one, but I don't think that Aiden will have it all his own way. Um, we've got warm up here at the moment, so we, uh, we can probably post some bills if you like. Yeah, so as you guys, ladies and gents, can see in the bottom there, Gentlemen's Sim Racing Club, we do have merchandise. So uh, go to our webpage. Let me just get it up on my screen here. What's that webpage address again? There you go. Merchandise store. Merch.tgsrci.com or my Shopify, whatever you prefer. There's plenty of stuff in there. Always uh, uh, looking to get those shirts out and... You know, obviously give a big shout out to all our uh, partnerships and sponsors speaking of which they're popping across the top of your screen I'll quickly run through and we got M wave we have flash graphics <coughs> excuse me uh, that do support the GSRC Inc we also have waste options Brayton pure Tasmanian cider and for anyone who might have missed it, Sprayton have actually been uh, elevated and they've stepped up to the uh, the naming rights sponsor of the GSRC for uh, the rest of the year, I believe. That's awesome. That's yeah, awesome. absolutely. So, it's, uh, it's something like we've worked hard. Um, yeah, and when you get great uh, partners like you know, Orbic and Sprayton, and all these guys that uh, get on board, flash graphics, waste options, uh, you know, you just, you've got to be proud. Exactly, exactly. Um, please check out those their websites, ladies and gents. Every little bit helps. Um, now, we go to the feature race. So, I'm just clicking all around the screens here. My apologies, I'll be back in a sec. There we are. Right, so. so on the pole for this one, we've got Greg Another Heaney. invert. Oh, it's another reverse one. This is two. There you go. So we've got Greg Heaney and Gary Cousins on row one. Sam Stride, Dale Sharp for row two. Nick Wood, Adam Maverick, row three. Ryan Howe, Josh Widow, row four. Brent Favell. So top ten invert. Uh, Julian Mookie, Colin Bennett, then we got Mark Horton, Tom Williams, Scott Jordanson, Brett Bradbury getting back in there after a 7 minute 11 second pit stop, Scott Craig, and looks like these other two, Eduardo and Chris, are not partaking. Bit of a pity because the more laps you do, the better you get. So, just with anything, you can't, you can't pick this up at one go, but look, all the more power to these guys, and the top 10 fully inverted. So, once again, Greg's going to have to work a little harder. As we roll away now, coming down into the Dandenong Road Complex. Thank you, Tristan. You can see here, we got a bit of a, we got, what, six kilometer an hour wind. You can see all the totem pole there. So the feature race, another 20 minute run. But this is for all the cookies, all the marbles. I'm gonna put the call out to Trent Lavis. I wanna see you next week. I'm gonna put the call out to Chris Whitaker. I wanna see you next week. I know he'd probably be at Queensland Raceway racing this weekend. That's not I wouldn't day. mind. Other people have raced on laptops. He can too. <laughs> I put the call out to Brenton Hobson. I'd love to see him in these. Here we go. Rolling up. Pace truck is in the pits. It does fit into pit lane. There you go. And Greg Heaney slowing them right down. Bringing the pace down. 
And he's go. No? What is going on here? Oh, there you go. That was a very late start. That's, that was a uh, late start. Yeah, that's an odd one. But uh, looks like everybody's been playing my side. Oh, oh, Gary no, Tazzard's in the outside. That. There's a big no, crash. No. All right, we'll get back to that in a sec. So watch these guys make their run down here into two, two and three. They got Greg Heaney leading away. Gary Cousins having a look on the outside to turn one there. And here we go, one of my favorite cameras in motorsport, especially in Australia. Oh! Greg Heaney sideways onto the back straight. Gary Cousins, Sam Stride, Dale Sharp, Nick Wood, and Adam Lavers there in the top six. Greg fell up to seventh already. Ready made three spots. Graham Stewart, uh, a lot of patience is needed in this car. Uh, Trent, I've got one sitting next to me. I'll talk to you offline about that one. Um, <laughs> As we go to Dandenong Road, uh, and we're focusing here on Adam Lavis, Trent's brother in fifth. Rick Heaney. I mean, he's curved there. So Greg Heaney leading away. He did get cranked up sideways through turn four, which I'm surprised he, he, he don't want to do that in the next 20 minutes again, because that's just going to superheat your tyres. So we've about finished the first lap. We might have to go back and have a look at those replays, Joe. Yeah, certainly. Down the front, how good are these cars? Well, they sound fantastic. I mean, fantastic. I didn't say that word. We'll just beep that. Here we go. Watching the sprays and replay. What happened here? Oh, someone oh, braked a bit late. Yeah, I think Brian might have got a little bit of uh, how's your mother with the name there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. coming across. So, I mean, Greg Heaney from a, a pretty much a standing start did a 109 and coming down here to Dandenong Road, nice and close. So, I guess with the, the first be qualifying so furious, it carries over into race one. I think the guys are calmed down now and you have to drive these cars quite calmly to get the speed out of them. So, it looks like this is going to bunch up and I'm looking at the timing screen, everything's yellow. So, Across the line we go, starting, man, we're into lap three already. That music's epic too, by the way. <laughs> I love it, Joe. <laughs> and Gaz is running a bit wide there. He's lost the spot to Nick Wood. Nick Wood's been quiet for most of the night. Here he comes into third place, so... Drive it nice and straight. No lock-ups. There we go, onto the back straight. Love these onboards. Listen to these things sing. Just a casual eight grand, seven, nine, eight grand, change up. Go through your gears, you only got four of them anyway. So lucky it's a big yeah, block V8. Sweeter than they are high ones. Oh, small block. Small block V8. Still got plenty of torque. Oh, fight for position here. Oh, oh. I think that's for the lead. Sam Strider's taking the lead off Greg Heaney, side by side through the Dandenong Road there. Oh, up the inside, Nick Wood. He must have saved a set of tyres or something. He's looking fresh. Greg Heaney lost two spots in two corners. And we go across, start the fourth lap. Fifth lap. Down, to, down the front straight. Into turn one. Here we go. Replay. Sam Stride, fantastic run. Ah, Greg's run wide for the first part. Find the curve on the second, and yeah, you're going to have somebody on your door through the apex down here, and he got pushed wide. And that's what allowed uh, uh, Nick Wood to get the run through and get under brakes here. Look at them, they're all bunched together. Fantastic. Right, our race two winners had a, had a moment. Oh, Aiden Schultz has come through. Oh, oh he's Aiden got Schultz. Got underneath. Ah, oh, no. Julian, and Julian's closed the door. Oh, he saved it though, there's no damage. Kept it off one. the wall. Oh, oh! Oh, oh he's okay. it on. Oh! Unlucky. Oh, no. And oh, look for his uh, efforts. <laughs> the highs of motorsport and the lows of motorsport. Alright, we're back on board with Greg Heaney here. He's lost a couple more spots. He's down fifth. I just got a text him. I can't hear you, Jared, I think. Uh, yeah. I'll push a button again, I don't know. Here we go, Gary Cousins. 
breaking out that dirt mark across the road there, just a bit after it. Gary Cousins on the inside here, Greg Heaney. And through, Josh Sawino getting a bit sideways. Oof. And then Dale Sharp down the outside of Josh. It's like Josh might have lost another position there. Oh, Greg's off. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Heaney's off. He just binned it at turn three there. We'll get back to them in just a second. We see here Dale Sharp getting alongside Josh Sawino. Got the run up the back straight because Josh got on the curve. And Julian Muki in eighth place there, Mark Horton in ninth, and Greg has recovered back into tenth. So we see Greg Heaney here, just had Gaz pass him. Plenty curb, and yeah, almost too much curb, and then into the tyres. Oh, nearly bounced back on the track that's too. An that's an ouchie. That is an ouchie. <laughs> Sam Stride, Nick Wood only four tenths apart from the lead of the race. Another second behind is Greg Favell, so I guess those guys are going to try and do their best to hold him up. Here we go down into the Dandenongs on the replay here. Adam's missing an apex. And defending to the inside. Does he run wide here? Yep, he runs wide here into the dirt. And he's lost another spot there. Alright, here we go. Back to 7th place, Josh Sawino chasing Dale Sharp. And we've got a cut to the lead here. We've got Sam Stride, Nick Wood, and Greg Favell all in tow. These guys have uh, been putting it on tonight. Nick Wood been... He's got his head around the car by looks of things now. So twitchy foot racing, he's no longer twitchy. Get that apex at the top of the hill. Apex on the run down the hill. He's really good under brakes here. Oh, speaking of which, spoke too soon, Greg Favell. <laughs> <laughs> Produces a hundred meter gap down to ten. Down the back straight, down the back chute. Into the final chicane. Excuse me. So this is a sky cam brought to you by Waste Options. Great viewing. See here all the topographical stuff here that they go to this extra length to scan when they do a scan for high racing. Rickville hasn't got a good run out of there, but I'll tell you what, Nick Wood's got a good run. You can have a look under brakes. Oh, I thought he was going to drill him in the back then. Putting the pressure on Sam Stride. He's just looking left, looking right, keeping the pressure on him. He's wanting him to fall off the road, make it a bit easy for him. Speaking of which, Greg's right on the back now. I think he's just going to take it easy and look after his tyres. What do you reckon, Joe? Yeah, look for that. Uh, that's what I'd be doing. Uh, I'm still not, uh, well, I'm still not well. Yeah, so one way to go on. Yeah, I reckon he's toying with them. Oh! Is it Sam Stride? It was. Sam Stride and, and Nick Wood. Did Nick hit him? Is he trying to slide to let him back past? Because, yeah, Sam Stride fell off the road there at Dandenong Road. And, uh, Mr. V8 Supercars in the lead. Let's see. Have a look. Yeah, just the tiniest of touch. Touch is pushed wide. And that's put Mr. V8 Supercars, the magician Greg Favell, into the lead, and he's just going to pull away again. So we got Sam Stride in second, and he's just redressed there to Nick Wood now. So he's given that place back. Oh, Nick. No. Oh, buddy. That's unfortunate. That was a great sportsmanship by uh, Sam Stride there. He knew he gave him, he gave him the rubber, so he's, uh, yeah, done the right thing, but Yeah, and now Greg has got a two and a half second lead on these two, so um, that's going to open up the top three. Behind Nick Wood, he's got Adam Labus right behind him, only eight tenths back, seven tenths back, so he's driving a solid race. Dale Sharp in tow, and then uh, Josh Sawino, another six tenths behind Dale Sharp. So those top six, or those bottom, uh, sorry, four, fifth, and six are really tight. And then further back, Mark Horton's putting the pressure on Gary Cousins there for eighth place. Oh, yeah, and these, these guys aren't too far back either, so Greg Heaney and Ryan Howe. So, fantastic racing. I reckon it's going to close up again when the tyres start going off at the end here, but Rick Favelle going through turn one. He's your leader on lap nine. Nine minutes and 40 seconds gone. Another 10 minutes to go. Brett Bradbury out there. He's about to get lapped, but he's still putting in the laps, and it's going to make him a better driver because 
once you learn to be calm and smooth in these things, it really carries across a lot of other cars, which is um, something I noticed when we did the NASCARs a lot, a lot of the first initial seasons back during COVID. So it should help me, hopefully, in the V8 Supercars and practice this car a bit more. Yeah, Speaking so of which... I think the key with these cars is gentle. So gentle application of the throttle, gentle but the angle of gentle, yet firm application of the brakes. Mm. So if you jump on the brakes, I think it just pitch forward, rears block, and they're ahead. So you know that. Yeah. Yeah, it's not an on-off switch, which is such a hassle when you drive a lot of open wheelers like I do. <laughs> Everything's so quick. And we got the aerial shot there. I love the aerial shot too, by the way, Joe. Sky cam, waste options here. We're looking at Julian Muki. Can we say cigarette sponsors on the cars? Anyway, he's got the chevrons happening there on his car. He's closing up behind the 300ZX there of uh, Brett Bradbury. And we got Gary Cousins here coming through two and three. And who's he got on his tail? He's got Mark Horton there with Greg Heaney on the back of him. Greg led him across the line and he dropped down a 10th. Hopefully he can get himself together and uh, make some headway get through the back of the front. This is our closest fight, by the way. <laughs> Gary Cousins in 8th with Mark Horton and Greg Heaney in 9th and 10th. It's all about minimising the mistakes around here and just being really gentle like we are discussing. Yeah, Actually, bear play. We, uh, we haven't had him on much, but uh, Brett Bradbury is still out there, he's pen laps, uh, Scott Jordan, he's another guy, he's a lap or so down at the moment. I think Bit of so. damage there. But uh, yeah, he's still soldiering on. How many fast repairs have we got for the cars in series um, I believe it's two per race, I'm just having a quick look now. Um, yeah, yeah two fast repairs per race. Yeah, I know Scott had a bit of issue earlier on, but something's going on here. Oh, here we go, look at this. Yeah, Nick Wood again. Sam Stride and Nick Wood. Sorry. <laughs> Sam Stride and Nick Wood there. <laughs> here we go, they're going to go side by side down here to the top of Dandenong Road. Something I probably wouldn't be doing, especially with these things. Now, well, Nick Wood, yes, exactly what I thought. Now he's got to defend on the way in and we push Sam Stride down at the apex. Oh, no. Oh, pitch rears oh. and off he goes. Nick's off. Rears and fronts. Yep, yeah, and that's pretty. Adam Maverick's made the pass as well. So, that's, uh, yeah, that was a good move by Adam. We'll, uh, we'll have a look at that from uh, Adam, I think. That's the thing. You lock rears, it puts you out, and whenever you get oversteer in a car, you end up using more track. It's the same with understeer. So, here we go. Onto the curb, I oh, got a bit much curb, a bit too much curb there, I should say. And it's had to claw his way past, nice and carefully. This replay brought to you by M-Wave and Sprayton. Loving these onboards too, by the way. The, uh, we got... the, the sound of them makes me wish that I was actually on the <laughs> Me too, Joe, me too. <laughs> Nothing beats a V8 in my mind, but anyway. For pure sound. Um, we got Gary Cousins here. I don't know if this is a replay or, or if this is live. No, it was a replay. Rookie error. I have not. Sorry, my bad. That's all right. And back to back to live pictures here. So now Nick Wood has to calm his nerves, cool the tyres off. Jeez, he's getting a lot of the brakes there. And uh, look, don't, don't crank the car too sideways because you just heat them back up again. He's just going to put put in the hard yakka and start putting the pressure on the cars in front. Here we go. First gear. Let's run through these gears. First gear, or might be second. Second, third, fourth gear. Listen to that, that's fourth gear now, my apologies. Fourth gear, running down into turn one, breaking early. Third, second. He's using first for turn one. Got to lose plenty of revs off to lock the rear wheels. Across the curb. Second gear, back to first for second uh, for two and three. Cross the curves there, and they get the car nice and straight. Break it in for four. First gear. Minimize Casual. Coming off the, off the, 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 the road, up the back of the 
they're uh, just the way they pick up the RPM and the horsepower and showing uh, six years, seven years on the tip there. That's it into the into the fast left hander, the fast right hander, and then braking hard for the left hander at Dandenong Road. Sideways again. Ah, oh, it's unfortunate. And he's lost more ground. And it's just going to continue hitting that, those rear tyres. He's got to use a bit more revs on the down change, I think. Because he's, yeah, continually looking out the side window than the front. That's all right. He's just got to take a deep breath. Tell me there's, I reckon he'll get back to him. And there's a full lap there around town. It may be simple, but it's all hard just as well. So, there we go. Josh Suino, third place getter in race two there. Yeah, he's up two positions at the moment. And running at six, so it's been a solid night. Badly ladder still for injury, so he's uh, he's doing a good job. And as I said earlier on, I know he's pretty happy to be uh, getting back to the bike really So it's um, yeah, that's no, good to see him do some He's that black wheels to be super stealth. <laughs> uh, once you go black, you can go back. Right? Yeah, the uh, I, I, uh, I run the black Uh, just a quick recap, three and a bit minutes to go. We've got Greg Favell leading by eight seconds to Sam Stride. With Adam Lavis in third. With Nick Wood, as we see here on screen, only seven tenths back, eight tenths back. And Dal Sharp rounding out the top five there. He's in a red car there. But it looks like Nick Wood is now closing back in on Adam. So hopefully he's minimising his wheel. No, he's still getting cranking it sideways a lot. It looks like Julian Mookie's off the, in the background there. He's just reversing back up. He's dropping down the field. We'll get to that in a replay. But yes, Nick Wood here. He's just got to calm that right foot down a little more. And I reckon he'll catch up Adam pretty quick. So Adam, Adam is one of those guys that is a solid racer. He always races quite solidly. Always makes his way through the field a bit in the vein of Paul Wood. Maybe we should put those two together in enduro. Um, and yeah, uh, sideways again. There's Julian now, Greg Heaney's about to go on the outside of him. Three, two, two and three. Very awkward. Yeah, the, you were talking about Adam, the thing with Adam is it doesn't seem to be able to get to the right. He's always consistently up in that top five and just about everything. Except for the uh, lead, he's very, very strong in the leads. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter for the type of yeah, it's very solid. Very good. So Greg Heaney here, four tenths behind Julian Mookie. And there's some other fights, but they're all about a second apart. This is the closest thing we have on track. Just a bunch of them going down into turn one there. You can see on the track map there. One minute 50 to go. I'm going to say there's going to be another lap. I don't see Barney sticking his arm out. No, he's not sticking his arm out there. So, still got another lap to go. Chris Whitaker, I extend that invitation to you next Friday night. You better get your butt in here. <laughs> COVID flashbacks, absolutely. We had, uh, we had exactly. But look at the lead. Greg Favell just put on Sam's stride. 10.4 seconds. And he only really yep. broke, broke stride here about... Maybe seven or eight minutes ago, and he's been special for a couple of uh, seconds later. That's it. I'd like to see Chris Whitaker, Trent Davis, maybe even a Brenton Hobson or a uh, Michael Postwaite in here again. See how these guys all go. We'd have a really chock the top, chock a block top five. Big names. All right, here's the white flag. Barney's sticking his arm out. Greg Favell, 10.6 seconds. Sam Stryber with, uh, in second with six tenths down to Adam Labus and another 1.3 to Nick Wood. Another 2.3 to Dale Sharp. So the top five are closing up. There's Dale right there in the red Ferrari. And who's that behind him? Oh, it is Josh. Sorry, I couldn't tell. <laughs> the sun's, sun's changed the angle. And then Gary Cousins there. And then in the background would be Mark. There he is. But Julian. The other close fight here with Greg. Oh, Greg, don't do that. Speaking of Greg's, Greg Favell, he'll be coming through the final complex now. 
There he is. Class of the field tonight. Mr. V8 Supercar, the magician, Greg Favell. Onto the exit curve there, coming across the line. Race one and three win. I dare say we will see him coming back for more. Uh, Watkins playing next week. Yeah, Watkins playing next week. Just seems right. Only gets over by 0.7 of a second. Over out of Maverick. Dale Sharp is coming across the line. Just hit a drop. Uh, Gary Cousins will be our next drop. Across the down five. Red Bradbury. Julian in green. Uh, Colin in green. Colin. Yeah, Colin in the STP car. Let's give him a bit of a screen time there. And we got Brett Bradbury here as well. So, I just do dead. Say, I, right. I do like that paint job that uh, the Brett's going to skip on the CZ. You could almost pass the car for one. That's right. <laughs> it does look like the... Um, 1994 Le Mans entering car, so we will uh, see who comes into the broadcast. Yes, well, yeah, uh, open to all members, so yeah, see if we can get them all back on board. Um, just to recap those results Greg from Sam, from Adam, from Nick Wood, from Dal Sharp to make the top five. So here we are, we've got Greg Heaney on board, so let's drag him down. All right, Greg, welcome aboard. I hope your night's been good. Uh, how is it from your perspective? Give us a bit of a rundown. Um, horsepower, yes. <laughs> Downforce, <Nick>. no. <laughs> None. <laughs> that was, uh, yeah, that, that's um, that's a hell of a lot of fun for a Friday night. Oh, that was the idea. Um, so uh, in terms of the brakes, was it something a bit hard to wrap your mind around? No, not really. Um, it's very, very finicky. Like, I had them wound back, I think, at one point as far as, like, 45% to the rear to, to keep the brake keep from locking the front up. Um, they don't have to go forwards because I just... Yeah, getting the balance right is um, interesting. Um, throttle control is a must. If you don't, you're dead. Um, I... I and, and whoever doubted Greg Favell's driving ability needs to drive and race against him in one of these things. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, you, you had the, the lead of the race there in race three, which we're seeing right now. Um, yeah, I screwed myself up. I only got a momentary lapse of, con lapse of concentration, ran a little bit wide on the exit of turn four. Yeah. Well, we saw Gary Cousins. Well, sorry, the start was really late. Was that... Um, that was deliberate. Was racing? No, that was me. Oh, okay. That, yep. was, that was deliberate because the start, the actual start line for Sandown is near the pit exit. That's right. Yeah. So you can hold the field for a very long time. There you go. And then we saw Gary Cousins get on the outside of you on the run down to turn one. Yeah, I felt that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, it cranked sideways onto the back straight. Did, that, uh, did you notice that cranking the car sideways, getting a bit of wheel spin, would um, tear up the rear tyres or overheat them? I was... <laughs> Probably a little bit too much too soon, but um, towards the uh, towards the end of the race, I was certainly feeling it a bit more than um, early on. But yeah, once I got further on and I was um, battling with the other guys a little bit further down in the, in the top 10, trying pushing just that little bit too much, I think, a little bit too soon out of corners, just lighting it up just a little bit was uh, punishing the rears. Yeah, fair enough. Overall, you enjoyed yourself? Oh yeah, I'll be back. <laughs> Fair enough, excellent. All right, looking ahead, we got Watkins Glen next week. No chicane, NASCAR route. Plenty of braking, hard braking at the end of the back straight there and a long corner to to uh, chase that up with. So I guess uh, just keep on it. Very much so. I mean, I've, I've done a couple of practice laps around Watkins. Um, yes, the, the right hand or the carousel, whatever you want to refer to it as, at the end of the back straight. Um, Braking ability on these cars is going to make it very, very interesting. Yep. There's a big bump on the way in too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, excellent. All right. Fantastic. Um, take a part of Mount of Men tomorrow. Is there Mount of Men tomorrow night, Trey? Uh, yeah, mate. Yeah, there certainly is Mount of Men tomorrow night. We've got the Rick Roy GTEs, the 
And the vet. Taking part in that, Greg? Uh, most likely, unless I have um, other arrangements happening, but I don't know yet. I, I most likely will be. Oh, this is the move here, actually. Sorry, we're just talking over the top of it. Um, ran wide at the top of the hill, which carried on down the hill, and then um, uh, the two guys yeah. got underneath here, Nick Wood and uh, Sam Stride. Yep. And then that kind of put me off balance for the next lap or two, and I ended up dropping, I think, five, four places in the space <laughs> yeah. of two laps. And it's yeah, like, we saw hmm. that. One of the, oh, one of the look. things... Oh, sorry, Nick. One of the things okay. that, that we're going to feature with this car, because it's a, a multi-surface vehicle, obviously, with usually road, Benjamin Oval, we're also doing dirt over as well. Is that something you've got to experience with Greg? Have you done anything on dirt wall? And have you done any practice like that? Eldora. Uh, I thought uh, it was Eldora first and then Bristol last, but um, yes, uh, I have. Around, I've changed it around, so Bristol will be May 3rd. I have done some dirt oval before, uh, very much like driving a sprint car around. Um, I did try some uh, practice with this on dirt, on both dirt ovals. Um, it, it's a lot tighter to, to try and slide compared to um, a sprinter, being that you are running symmetrical tyre setups as opposed to a sprint where it's asymmetrical. Mm. But um, yeah, it will be uh, very interesting. Excellent. All right, well done tonight, Greg. Congratulations, that was a top job. No worries. Thanks. Greg. All right. Well Second in today, I'm just going to do it on the time that you guys arrived into the, um, the channel here. So Josh Sawino. Welcome aboard. Uh, give us a quick summary of your night there. How are you, boys? Um, joined the server, realized I had no idea how to drive this thing. Somehow I managed to put down a decent lap in quali. Um, and yeah, just played the survival game. Um, I was definitely not the quickest guy on track, but I tried to keep my nose clean um, and I nearly zero x two races, but unfortunately I cut a little bit too much of an inside on the last race. But uh, yeah, no, it was a great night, and I uh, I'm going to need a long sleep and <laughs> a stretch after that because my gosh, it's a, it's a, a physical car. Top three in uh, race two. There, where did you start in uh, race two? Um, Get up some spots. I don't, I, I'm not too sure. I, was, I think I was two ahead of Greg, and I was worried about having to fight Greg, and then I stuffed up and didn't have to fight Greg, and it was it was amazing. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, what, 70, was, what was the biggest takeaway from tonight? What did you learn? Um, you can get a boat around Sandown. <laughs> <laughs> you're, too, you're too used to driving the, too used to driving things with the high downforce and lightweight. These things are actually gonna really pay off when you drive something else and uh, Greg can attest to that, Joe can attest to that and a lot of other guys, so it should pay off later in the week. Now that's it, Gaza, um, Gaza from the AER boys uh, had the best bit of advice for me and said, don't bother about trying to hit 100% until you're in third gear. And as soon as he said that, it, it just put, I think it just toned my head down about 50% and all of a sudden I could get it around a lap. So thank you, Gaz. Yeah, that's it. Did you notice you, each race you were improving, getting better, and finding the uh, finding the limits of the car? Uh, no, I actually think I found the limit pretty early in race two. Uh, race three, I was I think I just got physically exhausted. Um, I kept forgetting <laughs> at the end of quality. I, I was like, ah, oh, I gotta go. I gotta wind my brake pressure back because I, I, I run my brake stupidly heavy. And uh, I forgot at the end of quali, I forgot at the end of race one, I forgot at the end of race two, and tomorrow morning I'm going to wake up and remember why I should have done it. All right, we'll have to remind you to eat your Wheaties. Uh, you mm. going to come back next week? We've got Watkins Glen? Of course, I'll be here. Fantastic. Well done, Josh. Top job. Cheers, guys. All right. Before you go, oh, sorry. Uh, something I'm going to ask all the boys so that they get ready. Jeff, have you, uh, have you had any running?
<laughs> um, I've, I've done a total of four dirt officials in my iRacing career, so... Um, more than I'm, that, I'm, so I'm a 50% win rate, but 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 uh, no, I haven't done any dirt running in this, let alone uh, anything recently <laughs> at all. So no. I, I look at it this way too, Joe. There's a lot less people in here, and I find that it's a lot more relaxed because of that. So it's going to be good to try something new, like dirt, dirt ovals, and the like. So hopefully these guys have a bit more fun look than the high pressure stakes of GT3 or something along those lines. Just for something a little bit different to, uh, yeah, just to mix it up and, and it, it, it helps people draw from different senses. Yeah. Well done, Josh. Top job. All right, who was next? Was it Greg or was it Sam? Who beat who beat who in here? I think I dragged Greg in first. All right, Greg. Yes, mate. The magician. I'm call I'm calling you the magician because your magic under breaks. This Joe pointed it out to me uh, weeks back, and then I've watched you, and I was just like, wow, that's where all the time is. So give us a quick summary of your night, and how did you find the car? But talking of the brakes, my teammate just said to me, did it feel like the brakes were going towards the end? And I said, no, I think my legs were going towards the end there, not the brakes. <laughs> but I was the same. I think I got my brakes up too hard, set up for the supercar, and race three was really hurt. So yeah. two wins from three races. Oh, sorry, go, Joe. I was going to say, you drive in, uh, in race two, the catch eight and get to within I think seven tenths of the finish line in race two mate that was a storming drive I'll say right off the bat congratulations but uh, mm. it certainly must have worn you out to try and get uh, through the pack not not the biggest field that we've had but 980 thanks mate yeah no my tyres were cooked the last four laps there I knew I was catching him but I didn't think I was ever going to get past him because I couldn't get any drive out of any corners so in race three, I, I just sat behind and just took my time a bit, trying to save the tyres instead of burning them up. But yeah, same thing, they... last two or three laps, they have completely gone. So. All right, so you're, you are enjoying these cars, enjoying the series? Yeah, well, I only did a bit, little bit of practice this afternoon. I spent more time painting it than I did laps. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, that's practice session. And yeah, we used to do a little bit of practice in the driving the NASCARs around track yes. like Road yes, America and stuff. Smart. And then you jump back in the supercar and you learn so much, like throttle control and... Yes. So, a lot of Yeah, that's, that's my biggest takeaway. I'm hoping people take away from that is that, because um, we used to do this on a Friday night anyway with NASCARs, is you drive the NASCARs and then it really pays off driving everything else. You're, as Joe and I were discussing, you're smoother and uh, uh, there's less shock input, I like to call, into the car. It's more progressive yep. input and it just makes driving and lapping quicker, so... Yep, just learn to straighten the car up before you get on the gas and break yeah, the so lines. I might have to do some practice of this across the weekend so I can catch up to you on the V8s on Monday nights. But anyway, <laughs> fantastic. Well done tonight. No worries. Thanks, Joe, guys. Joe, your question? Yeah, great. As you've heard the other guys, dirt, None. Mate. None. Done none. <laughs> oh, so, so I take it the two dirt rounds are going to be your drop rounds. I'm the best ever right? I'm hoping I get called into work just before I race. <laughs> no, nah. right, nah, I look forward to it. It's something new. Always willing to try something different. So, well, by the sounds of it, man, if you want to broadcast, I'll go in and do the, uh, do the dirt ones. I, I, I've got to say, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of it. I used to actually race with it anyway. But, um, yeah, the, the dirt side of, side of the, uh, the iRacing thing is my favourite for me. So it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, depending with the format, I'm not sure. Look, I've got a, one of our teammates is an ex-sprint car real-life driver, so I'll be hitting him up for a few tips. <laughs> Drive us off, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, just me a <laughs> All good. Top job, Greg, well done. Yeah, All right, cheers, thanks, Thomas. Thanks. All right, and Sam Stride. There we are, the Napa guess, car. Right. Yeah, good. How, uh, give us this quick summary of your night. You're up the front the pointy end the whole night. Good. Uh, yeah, race two, I had a bit of a misfortune. I sort of tried to come back as best I could, but um, the other two races, obviously I finished second. I was sort of, Greg got past me and I was like, yeah, look, I was looking at the times on my top screen. I was like, you know, it's, I'm a bit quicker off the mark than that. I'll just, I'll let him do his thing and I'll just drive to a number. And I was 
just making sure I kept um, out of Mav. Um, or in the other race, I had I can't remember who was behind me in the sec in Nick the first race. Nick? Yeah, I think it might have been Nick. I was just I was literally just driving to a number. I was making sure I kept my tyres so that if if they were going to uh, burn up to me, I wanted them to spend their pennies so that I had some in my pocket. Um, so I was literally just driving to a number because I knew that if I tried to catch Greg, I was just going to overdrive the car and send it in the wall. So I figured I'd just play the the smart game and uh, hold my second position. Yeah, fantastic. This is see, this is another thing I like, Joe. Cerebral drivers, not only thinking about how they drive the car, but the reasons why they're driving in such a way. So I'll give you a big high five for that one, Sam. They're really thinking about the, the race as a whole rather than just a single lap. Yeah, well, this, uh, I don't... I, like I know, I know my limits, and I know that Greg was the quickest bloke on the track tonight. So there was no point trying to um, trying to interfere with him. But I knew that the guys behind me were a really similar pace. So I knew if I just sort of drove to a number and drove quick enough to sort of incentivise them to to push their car a little bit, maybe try and get them to burn their tyres off, but at the same time sort of manage mine as best as possible. Yeah, yeah, very good. Um... Did you, what are, what are your biggest takeaways from this tonight? What, did you learn anything that you can apply to other places? Um, well, I found with these cars, aside from like the other sort of NASCAR type cars, the American cars, um, these have got probably the worst brakes, I'd say, which like, mm. which is fine because everyone's got the same brakes. But uh, you got to turn in very early because the, the front tires just don't have any turn in. So it's, it was a bit of a game of you got to get all your braking done really early, get off the brakes so you can get the thing to turn in and behave itself. Yeah. So it's, it was all very, um, a lot of exaggerated driving traits you need to um, take control of. And as was mentioned earlier about uh, throttle, which sometimes a lot of people struggle with is sometimes less is more. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, because you start spinning the tires, you're not going anywhere and you're just heating them up and it's just, and then it, it's a compounding drama. You get them hot, they're going to spin more. Looks fantastic at our end, by the way. We were watching a couple guys getting sideways oh, yeah. almost all the corners. It was actually really good, but yeah. it's, it goes back to textbook driving. Breaking a straight line, get that nice long arc and apex it and just gently onto the throttle again. It's not a light switch. It was, um, it was an interesting uh, car coming into the turn before the back straight because you sort of you wanted to sort of almost go kart it in there and get the rear to sort of rotate for you because you didn't have that front end turn. So it's yeah, yeah, it was an interesting bus, but yeah, that no, was a bit of fun. All right, um, well done tonight, Sam. Top job. We'll see yeah, you mate. back next week for Watkins Glen. Yeah, absolutely, that'd be great. And, then, and answer your question, Joe. Joe's question, yeah. Happy with dirt. That's where I've done most of my eye racing, and um, yeah, I'm. Really, really comfortable in the dirt, and I'm happy with it. Ah, good stuff. There's a, there's a couple little tricks with this car, too, in the dirt. The one thing that it seems to not have is a very fast ratio steering box in the dirt. So there's, okay. uh, there's certainly uh, some little tricks there if you can... Yep. Uh, if you can I'm catching it. your drift. Yeah, don't tell everybody, though. <laughs> get it? Yeah, get I'm it, catching the drift. <laughs> I, know we, I, I know how to get around this steering box drama you're talking about. It's all... Yeah, yeah, it's, it's just wink, like that. Wink, wink, wink. Yeah, and yeah, but it, it's, it's sort of whether you change your ratio or however you do it, but it's um, it's definitely a, a car that's difficult on the dirt if you uh, if you don't get on top of uh, your setup. I can I can see it being a bit of a bit of a plow understeer type thing if you don't get the almost like the uh, the the trucks mm. they uh, yes sometimes if you don't get them. Uh, the rear released on those, they'll just keep pushing all day. Yeah, that's, I usually do that. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, they're a bit of a trick to those things as well. Oh, fantastic. Well done. Thanks, on mate. See you. We'll catch you next week, yeah? Absolutely. All right. So, Joe, we got a bit of uh, housekeeping to do? Yeah, absolutely we do. Coming up on... Uh, we've already run what but Josh, you want to take us through the next enduro round that we've got coming up? Yeah, so uh, the 12th of May, Mother's Day, I believe, unfortunately, but um, Laguna Seca, four hours. So this is going to be an absolute ripper of an event. Um, last one, we had a little bit of weather. Um, everyone took it in their stride. It was actually phenomenal to see 
um, how well everyone actually handled it. Um, forecasts are up. I don't believe there's too much of a chance of weather at Laguna, but we might be playing spin to win um, at the corkscrew if so. But uh, no, it should be great, guys. Uh, next one, 12th of May. Yeah, so... Not uh, time broadcasting, but just the... Yeah, and the up next, tomorrow night, those members who are still uh, eager and waiting want to do some laps around the mountain. We've got a... What, how many Ks is that, Joe? Is that 100 Ks? 200 Ks? Uh, 200 Ks, yeah, and it's not the 2009 Falcon that might no. change out. My bad. Sorry, guys. That's all right. So we got what we call Mountain Men, 32 lap race, 8.30. Is that Eastern time? Uh, yes, hey, Sadie, Eastern time. Uh, and we've got the GTE cars. So, Corvette C8, Ford GT. What else is in there? BMW M8. There's a Ferrari. Just the RSR, I think. And the Porsche, yeah. So, that's on Saturday night. So, those of you who want to turn some laps and have a bit of fun, make sure you're in the Discord. It's not broadcast, but we do have a lot of fun in there. Uh, and then the RSR is an absolute boss and it's so much fun. And it's mid-engine, not rear-engine, which is good. Uh, and then, oh sorry, go back a page, Joe, sorry. <laughs> On Monday nights we got our uh, V8s, Super 2 and Super 3 Series, is it from Phillip Island? I must be looking at the wrong page. No, I think I, uh, I need to update these, sorry. Go oh, Ch Chicago Street Course, there we go. I can see it. Chicago Street Course, that's going to be fun. I really love that place, so this should be fun. And then straight after that, we got the GT3 Series from uh, Circuit de Le Mans. A little bit of sprint action happening there, and we know in real life that the uh, GTs are now going to GT3s there for Le Mans from this year onwards, so perfect time to practice. So that'll be two splits there. Oh, which split are we broadcasting? I'm not too sure. Maybe Adam can help us, but he's not here. Anyway, that's Monday night. Tuesday night, we got the up and comers, the Van Ring Cup from, let's have a look here, Motorsport Arena Oschersleben in the, is that the right one? Formula V? Uh, because I'm part German, yes. And then <laughs> straight after that, uh, the GT1s, the Civil War. I don't see that being civil, but anyway, the not so civil, Wall from Sebring International Raceway in the Corvette and the Aston Martins. All right, next page. Wednesday, we got the GT... Oh, is it not up? Should no, be the production car production challenge. Car challenge. Yeah, it's up. yeah, I just can't see it on the um, league sessions there. But anyway, production car challenge. Was it? Is it from Sandown? Must be a different track. Uh, I, I, I don't see it, but anyway. No, and no, GT4s think... from... Autodromo International, Enzo e Dino from Ferrari, the Imola, so that should be good fun. And then Thursday night we got the Formula Vs from Osher again in Germany, followed by the Wings and Slicks, the Super Formula Lights from the Hungara ring, that should be actually quite good with that small car around there. And then in seven days time we're back at it, at the Glen. So. There's your calendar for the next seven days. The SRX calendar might still change bits and pieces here and there and everywhere, especially race formats. But, uh, you know, plenty of action to be had, even though this field got spread out after a while. I reckon it's just going to get tighter and tighter the more these guys keep coming back and the more people we can get on track. And it sounds like there might be a Lavis and a Whitaker or two coming on board. We should be having some good action there. So join us next week, next Friday, the... 26th of April, we'll be back here, myself and Joe, and the GSRC, brought to you by Lobesy Racing, <coughs> excuse me, M-Wave, we also have Flash Graphics, obviously GSRC, we'd like to thank our partnerships with Waste Options as well, and Sprayton, Pure Tasmanian, so, Obviously, join us next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. will be from Watkins Glen in upstate New York with these mad cars. All horsepower, no brakes, and uh, it should be good racing. Once again, thank you to Joe Baldwin and everybody who participated in tonight.
And thank you, Josh, as well. And just as we go out, I just want to say, remember, Friday night is SRS night. Thank you.